A very good day. Welcome to the next edition of Wolves Weekly. Today I have a special guest, Mr. Taslim Arif, who knows everything you can imagine about computers. He has a bachelor's degree in computer engineering and a master of science in computer science, so he knows everything about inside of a computer and the outside of all the components as well. Taslim, you are as well, which I need to mention, a technical product manager for a company called Caruso, which is operating in Germany. A warm welcome to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Olds. I'm glad to be with you. Yeah, I need to say that you are as well a DBA student of SPS, and that brings us to our first question of this talk, which is about mobility. How do you see the future of mobility? It's only going to be electric cars, or how are we going to move from point A to point B in the future? Okay. I think it's really an interesting question. I mean, the mobility services, it's going through actually a huge innovation at the moment and the main reason of this drastic innovation is actually in the European Union and since 2018 there is the new regulation that all the vehicle manufacturers like BMW, Mercedes or all vehicle manufacturers they need to implement the emergency call uh, in the car. So it mm -hmm. means if there is something happens in the car emergency so the car should send this signal to the cloud of the vehicle manufacturer. And it, as it is a mandatory thing, so it gives the technological infrastructure that uh, from the different sensors of the cars, now the vehicle manufacturer, they will collect this data and bring it to their cloud. And as you know, if you think about the mobility services, of course, it depends on the data. Right? And as it is mandatory now, so this mobility services now will have, uh, it's open to all this data item that was not available before. So that means it will really uh, fuel uh, the mobility service innovation to a, to a great um, extent. So what do they do with this data? Because, for example, you can go now, take an insurance, and insurance says we give you a little discount, but yeah. we put a component into the car which basically analyzes your driving style and all this. Is that the only thing that data is able to collect, or what does it all collect today? No, I mean, uh, what you said is actually uh, this, this will go away. So this additional device that an uh, insurance company plug into the car, so this won't be there in the, in the, so this is not the connected car, you know. So this is the um, a solution that, uh, that companies are using now, but because of this new regulation, every car will be connected hardware free, you know, so you do not need to really plug any device, car will be automatically connected. Huh? And uh, so that means if your insurance company or any other company wants to provide a service, for example, pay as you drive or workshop or roadside assistance or whatever you can think of. So they will be able to collect uh, the data from the vehicle manufacturer cloud. Huh? But the issue is, it is a personal data, you know, when you want to retrieve data from a particular car, it is associated with the vehicle. And then uh, European Union also has introduced this GDPR, right, the General Data Protection Regulation. And this personal data is protected under GDPR. So that means this end user will have to give permission uh, to BMW or to Mercedes to share this data with this insurance company or roadside assistance company or workshop or whatever. And once uh -huh. the, the permission, then this, uh, these companies, they can build any services. Eh? So just let's see one example of electric car. Eh? So let's say a electric charging company, they want to optimize their uh, the free slots. Eh? And if they can identify, you know, which car has how much battery percentage at the moment, and let's say I have electric car and it's only 20% charged now. They can approach me, you know, in an app because they can get this data from the car directly because I have given them the permission. And then they can tell me, okay, please come to this free slot at this time. So then uh -huh. I can have better service. They can also better optimize their resources. And this is just an example, but there will be thousands uh -huh. of examples of this type that was not possible before, you know. 
Uh -huh. yeah. So actually, it means that we really should also have the uh, 5G operating networks because we still can collect more data, and at the end of the day, we can improve our driving style. We can we can improve all different features of the car. Is that correct? Exactly. I mean, with uh -huh. 5G, of course, it will be even much more, you know, uh, better. But already, without 5G, it's already working. Yeah? The the all the I mean, at least the major uh, German OEMs. Uh, they are providing this data to third parties and third parties are already collecting this data and experimenting with all these different kinds of services. For example, insurance company, this pay as you drive or pay how you drive or the workshop, you know, they can also collect the data. They can remotely diagnose this car, you know, that what is the situation of the car and then can approach the car owner, okay, please visit us, you know. And the roadside assistance company, if there is something breaks down, and they can also remotely check, you know, what is the situation of the car and then can advise you, okay, please park it or go to this workshop or we'll uh, come to you, you know, to rescue you. So whatever. So all these things uh, will be possible now. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we know now that these vehicle manufacturers like Daimler, Volkswagen, etc., they have access to all this data, and we know that this data is actually uh, the new oil. So yes. what does it mean actually for the aftermarket uh, business? Will there be any business disruptions? Is there any new Nokia on the road? Mm -hmm. Or uh, which platforms uh, do we use for, for this data? Uh, what is your point of view on that? Yeah. Yeah, that's an actually excellent question, you know, because <laughs> as you said, it's a, it, the data is the new oil, right? So uh, the, the vehicle manufacturers, now they have access to the data. That means they are close to the end user, the car owner, you know, they know exactly what is happening in the car and then they can approach the car owner immediately. But mm -hmm. now the aftermarket, they are not, they do not have this data yet, right? Because data is with BMW, Daimler, and other companies. So exactly. they have a fair share, you know, or fair access to this data so that they can also build uh, services that is comparable by the vehicle manufacturer. So the car owner then has a choice either to go to aftermarket or to the vehicle manufacturer workshops or services. So it means actually that, I mean, of course, these different vehicle manufacturers, they also have a lot of variations in some terms of technology and, and so on and so on. So that's why it's it's really, you know, a lot of platform will emerge here, you know, so that will standardize all the access to the different vehicle manufacturers uh, in terms of processes, uh, data items, formats, and the legal aspects, business aspects, so that the everybody gets access to the data in a, in a neutralized, open and standardized environment, but the competition only happens on the service level, you know. Mm -hmm. Then the aftermarket companies, you know, they can also have the equal access like the, like the vehicle manufacturer and they can build uh, services. Now for the aftermarket, of course, I mean, this platform is the key. Uh, um, there will be platforms and there are already several initiatives in the EU and also in the US. Uh, the I mean, of course, whether we'll see new Nokia or not, it depends on how the aftermarket or these companies actually um, uh, work now. Because, of course, the cars are now connected and they are sending data. But the, if you see the coverage, if you see the quality, it is still not in the level that you can um, uh, productize it globally, you know. So there uh -huh. is improvement potential. But the these companies, they should not wait, you know. If they wait, then they will lose this learning. Yeah? And there might be other companies coming, you know, and can build services that these traditional companies um, did not try out, you know. So then there might be disruption of their business. They might lose this market share. Um, so they have to, even if it's not perfect, they have to already start trying out, you know how to access this data, how to build services out of this data, and so on. So, 
So yes. basically, uh, that means what you just said is that uh, it's not full. It's it's already in development, but it's not a full product because I'm also a little bit afraid because I see always less and less young people who don't have uh, a driving license and they say, "Oh, we don't need a driving license anymore. We're just waiting for the autonomous vehicle." So yes. are are you saying it's not for tomorrow yet because we cannot do the mass production yet? But it's good that we're in the experimental phase because we can always improve and improve and improve. Did I understand you right on that point of view? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it uh -huh. won't tomorrow immediately, you know. So let's say just autonomous car is one thing, but, you know, just the connected car, you know, that, okay, car is just sending data to the cloud. So what is our current prediction? By 2025, in five years, uh, around one third or 40% of the cars will be connected, you know, because the penetration, the old car needs to be replaced by the new car, you know, so yeah. there is starting percentage every year new cars are added so just you see five years then it will be one third only and if you see autonomous car the penetration and other thing it will also take a bit longer right because every year the old car has to be replaced by the new cars i mean it's true that okay this will come for sure uh, this autonomous car and other things and but uh, it won't be just tomorrow you know so it it will be a gradual uh, gradual change eh? And, uh, but everybody needs to prepare for this. For example, for autonomous car, if you have autonomous car, then the drivers or the, uh, the passengers, they have more time in the car, you know, so they, they won't drive anymore. They need to do something else. So exactly. they, need, <laughs> they need more services inside the car and that requires, you know, a lot of connectivity with the car, you know, we need to get a lot of information about the car with the external world so that you can give better experience to the passengers. And if you do not start trying out now, you know, so then also when the autonomous car will be in the market, you cannot really offer, you know, best services to the passengers. Yeah. Wow, Taslim, I find that you're doing an amazing job. It's uh, nice to learn that Caruso is uh, working on that. And I see that uh, you guys have done already a fantastic job, that there is still a lot of things to do because, yes, I don't want to be distracted even if I'm sitting in an autonomous vehicle. Well, I thank you for this insights. It was really interesting. And uh, keep on doing a good job. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to have a session with you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.